So earlier on, uh, last episode, I showed you guys that whenever you take an object and you slide it around without rotating it, whenever an object travels across the um, the sight ray of something, it uh, your your angle, the the, the angle at which you see it changes. So what I have here, I, I don't think I gave a very good example of it because some of you guys might say, "Oh, you just rotated it with your hand." So what I have here is a missile gyroscope, surplus missile gyroscope. I've just spun it up now. And now this thing will maintain its orientation no matter what I do. So now I'm going to let me just grab that and point it at the camera. Okay, so as long as this thing is spinning, it should maintain its direction. So when we look straight up, there you are. You're seeing it from below. Now we're seeing it again pointed at the camera. And when we look down, you're looking at the top side of this thing. So there's a very important rule there proven by a missile gyroscope. Let me put that down. Whew, that makes, that makes quite a ruckus. Pretty amazing what they can do with ball bearings these days. I'll let that spin on its own. Okay, so where I'm going with that is I'm saying that the position of an object um, is going to affect the angle at which you see it. I mean, you can rotate an object. That's going to affect the angle at which you see an object. But also, the position of the object is going to affect uh, its angle. So, whenever you have to draw an object, um, this 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 lesson is about form direction. Um, whenever you have to to draw any particular form, you have to first consider: Are you looking at it from above, in which case you're going to see more of the top, or are you looking at it from underneath? Okay, or are you looking at it from you know one side or the other? You know, sort of, what is the angle at which I am I am viewing my object? So that's the first thing, and the, the second thing is that all objects, well, except for maybe spheres, have what I would like to call a form direction. Now, in this case, this object has a form direction. It's it goes right through the the axis, right through its axis. Any kind of finger, you know, any any little finger, little cylinder of meat, has a direction. Okay, it's pointing up now. It's pointing, you know, left and right and up and down. Um, so any cylindrical object, see, has a. Again, now the, the the thing's pointed straight at you or pointed away from you. So forms will have a major direction. They'll have a, an axis through them. And You'll find that they also tend to have not only do they have a major axis, but they uh, a major dimension, but they'll also have a minor di dimension that goes that way. So where I'm going with all this is when you deal with things like posing, you want to pose a person. You have to see how all of these forms are aligned. You have to look at you have to consider the form direction of all of these parts. So not just, and you have to consider the form position of all the parts. So when you look at someone at a hand, you know something that is natural, you'll find that all of the form directions, they all point to one another. They all point, you know, even even in this case, you know, they will they will always point, you know, towards whatever it is that they are connected to. There's no there's no escaping it. They objects will always all the forms will always point towards whatever they are connected to. So, and and the other thing is not only do they have that you know major dimension of of length, but they also have the minor dimension of width and maybe the minor dimension of thickness. So same thing here, you know, my forearm will have a major dimension of length, but also a minor dimension of width and another minor dimension of thickness. In my case, a very very minor dimension. So. Getting to how this affects your drawing, let's see. You know, let's use that one. Okay, so if I wanted to draw, a, say, a forearm, then, or, or actually, let's let's not even use the forearm. Let's use a coin. A coin will have. It's got its axis, the axis in which it is pointing. It also has a, uh, a radius and a circumference, you know, uh, but it has a radius. That is, you know, a known dimension. If I were to instead draw a jar, you 
you know, there, this, this jar has its own parameters as well. It has a radius and it also has another major dimension of height and its thickness. Well, since it's circular, it, it, it's a, it has a circular cross profile. It's, it's, its width and its depth, you know, all the way through, it's, it's all the same. But you have to consider what are the, parameter, the parameters of the object. So if you wanted to do, say, an arm, then you have to first figure out where is the arm pointing. You know, you've got the elbow at one end, you will have the wrist at another, but what direction is this arm pointing in? Where's the, the major direction that it's pointing in? So, clearing that. Um, when you're dealing with a, any kind of flow in a, in a pose, so supposing Supposing that I was going to draw, you know, this pose pointing towards the camera or something like that. Okay, here we go. We have three directions. We've got a direction going this way. We have another direction that goes down and then a direction that goes up. This is the flow. The flow is trying to figure out how to chain all of these directions from the shoulder going down and towards us. And then also coming down and towards us again. And then finally coming up. So that would be, now I'm going through and I'm establishing the, the minor, the minor dimensions of thickness and width. See, there's your thickness, there's your width. Here again, we have our width, thickness, uh, thickness and width at the wrist. Everything has thickness and width. So three dimensions. You've got your major dimension going this way, and then you have your two minor, secondary and minor dimensions. Everything has three dimensions to it. So that is when you deal with a, a flow, let's say of a, of a torso. You know, we're gonna have someone who's. moving away from us, leaning away from us, and same deal. I have one dimension going this way, I have another dimension going that way, then I have a major dimension going that way. Three-dimensional forms. So right there, I can make a torso. So this is why I ask people uh, often to deal with boxes, because when you deal with boxes, you have to control three dimensions, width, height, and thickness. Now you can see how I'm, see that? We're looking down upon these things. We're looking up at these things. Even though they, the angle doesn't change, our relative angle when we view them is going to change. So I'm not drawing a person, I'm just drawing boxes. Cutting holes in boxes and just adding more boxes. Except in this case I'm going to figure out what's the direction of the major dimension. And then I can figure out the position of a hand and the orientation and then I can easily figure out the direction because, well, that's where the hand wrist is, that's where the elbow is. Where else is that direction going to be? Where else is that, that part going to be placed? So, that's, that's, there's not really much to it. It's quite simple. Um, I don't know, let me think. Got some time, think of another example. Uh, you want to deal with a chair. And same deal. I'm going to have the major direction is pointing upwards. I can chop that, chop that. It's still basically a box. Okay. Same thing. 